The last award of the day is, um, is the Beverly Antle Leadership Award. And it is uh, a highly coveted award and one that we, um, we present with, with great delight. This award is bestowed every two years and it recognizes the pivotal and dynamic leadership roles played by social workers in non-traditional positions. The recipient this year is someone uh, I have the pleasure of knowing and I'm particularly delighted to be here to present this award to. So Julie Foley, come on down. about Julie, because I know she's going to get the mic in a minute, but I have it now. <laughs> I've known Julie, but I've always known Julie at arm's length. We've kind of crossed paths through our, our careers in home care and, um, and with the Ontario Association of Community Care Access Centers, uh, and so I've known of Julie longer than I've known Julie. So let me share a little bit with you about Julie. Julie has been active in the social work profession provincially, nationally, and internationally. Her extensive community volunteer experience includes aid support, community education in cancer, heart, palliative, palliative care, women's issues, and dementia. She served as chair of the Canadian Mental Health Association in Sarnia Lambton, as president of the Canadian Association of Social Workers from 1993 to 1997, as member of the OASW Board of Directors, as vice president for North America and the International Federation of Social Workers. Sorry. <laughs> and is co-chair of the International Federation of Social Workers Conference in Montreal in 2000. Julie received the CASW Outstanding Social Worker Award in 2002. More recently, she, has chair, she was chair of the Federated Health Charities and a member of the Executive Committee of the Health Charities Coalition of Canada. Julie was also lead for the Integrated Client Care Project for the Ontario Association of Community Care Access Centres. Julie graduated from the University of Toronto with her Bachelor of Arts and Masters of Social Work degrees. In the early years of her career, she worked in Child Welfare in Thunder Bay, Timmins and Sault Ste. Marie. She subsequently moved to Southern Ontario and was employed in the acute care field and held leadership positions in family service organizations, community-based social service organizations, and health care organizations. She was executive director of the Family Counseling Centre in Sarnia, a multi-service organization providing a wide variety of professional and volunteer services. She was director of the Family Service Association's Placement Coordination Service in Toronto, leading its initiation and development at a time of great challenge. From 1997 to 2006, Julie was the executive director of the Scarborough Community Care Access Centre of Toronto until its transition into the newly structured CCAC system at the end of 2006. Julie served as president and CEO of Osteoporosis Canada from 2007 to 2010. You will agree with me that she's an incredibly accomplished person, wouldn't you say? Um, Julie's leadership is characterized by exceptional executive administration, straight of skills, strategic thinking, and strong inclusive management skills. Julie has worked with a wide variety of staff members as well as with frontline volunteers and boards of directors. She has worked in multi-level organizations in different parts of Ontario, providing her with a significant appreciation of regional differences. She's been a member and supporter of the Ontario College of Social Workers and Social Service Workers, as well as its predecessor organization since its inception. She's been a strong voice for the profession and is a remarkable role model. She is most deserving of this recognition from her peers through the Beverly Antle Leadership Award. Please join me in congratulating and acknowledging Julie Foley. Thank you very much, Kate. There's certainly nothing like recognition from your peers, and uh, you know, there's a place in my heart always for social work organizations and social workers. 
I've never particularly thought of myself as being a, a leader in a non-traditional role because I think that all of us just act and lead wherever life takes us or wherever we find ourselves. I have had the benefit of wonderful opportunities presented to me and um, a couple of them by people who have decided to take a chance on me and I always remember that so that I can pay it forward and uh, I have continued to do that throughout all of my leadership life and, and will continue to do that. I think leadership is a gift. Uh, to be shared and it's a responsibility that should be exercised deliberately with careful attention to the impact on others. Uh, I always try to maintain awareness about what I bring to a leadership role both personally and professionally. Uh, and I have to say, and I've often said it to both social work colleagues but others, um, I think that my social work training and training all of us share here in this room, uh, with its focus on the use of self, the use of self deliberately and differentially in relationship, is the best damned leadership training regardless of where you work. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, because make no mistake about it, that whole use of, that business about the use of self it doesn't matter whether the relationship is therapeutic or not. It's absolutely critical as a lever and hopefully most of us learn how to use it in, in productive and positive ways. And it's always about relationship. It doesn't matter what your job is or what field you're working in, it's always about relationship. A couple of organizations that I have led, um, members of the management team with whom I've worked closely, have often uh, been heard to comment with, with some amusement but also some respect that uh, I use my social work skills every day with all of them. And, and, and that's true, we all use our social work skills every day uh, with everyone with whom we uh, have any kind of encounter. I've, I've worked a fair bit in healthcare, and although health is not the place where the greatest number of social workers are employed, I can't imagine healthcare without social workers. Um, I always derived a great deal of pleasure when I was at the Scarborough CCAC of clarifying that no, 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 I wasn't a nurse, I was a social worker. <laughs> uh, because there was just not an expectation that a social worker would, would land in the CEO position. Um, I often reminded my healthcare uh, executive colleagues as well that health was a lot more about the social determinants of health than it was about the number of doctors, the number of CAT scan machines, the number of MRI machines, even those are, are absolutely essential. Uh, I did, you, um, someone mentioned the uh, the CMA work right now, but also I loved the item in the CBC National within the last week of the doctor who was prescribing antidotes for poverty because that was in fact the greatest element that compromised the health of uh, his patients. When I was at Scarborough CCAC, I used my social work background for some very specific contributions that that didn't come from other places as easily as it came from social work. One was a widening of awareness about healthcare being provided by a whole lot of community agencies, health fostering uh, programs that came from community agencies, and it w health wasn't just provided by physicians, CCACs, and hospitals. Uh, also, I remember often talking about how much family members were part of who we served and not just the, the patient. Actually, there were times when we even had, when I even had to remind our workers about patients being critical and being an essential part of assessments and care plans because sometimes uh, other professions felt that they knew what kind of care plan needed to be delivered for some people without necessarily talking a lot to the patient. One of my forays into leadership that was a bit non-traditional was my uh, efforts uh, in the 80s and early 90s uh, to be elected as a federal MP. And I know there are a few of you here who wrote checks for me uh, when I sent you that letter uh, soliciting assistance for my campaign. And I have to tell you, those checks were all legitimate. There was nothing like <laughs> Nigel Wright and Mike Duffy. They were all about board. People got a, a tax deduction for a, a receipt for a, for a formal receipt. 
Um, but it seemed to me at the time that political engagement was such a natural extension of social advocacy and a commitment to social justice. But it was interesting, at the time I was executive director of the Family Counseling Center. And the man who was managing my campaign was a man that I just adored. He was wonderful and competent and committed. But boy, was he uh, confused and a bit ticked off at me when, in the, when you are running an election campaign, of course, there's always credentials to be filled out and the media wants to know who you are, especially first time around. And I insisted in the slots or answers to the questions about what my occupation was, was that I was a social worker. And I would come back from you know, a media interview or whatever and he'd just be, like how come you didn't say you were the executive director of the Family Service Agency? And I said, that's my job, that's not my occupation. And it, he finally relented. I won that one even if I didn't win the election. Um, I, I'm just one of many social workers who've, who've made a difference and who have jobs outside what's perhaps the, the traditional social work uh, venues. And, and there are, you know, some of them are my friends, there are many of us. Laurie Schechter Wolfson is here in the audience. Laurie is the Dean of Health Sciences at George Brown. Some of you would know Gloria Latanzio. She's, she calls herself the chief executive organizer of that wonderful knowledge exchange site, the conference.ca. So there are lots of us. Some have been acknowledged in the OASW Inspirational Leaders uh, Awards and lists. So there are many of us around. So I, I think I'm, I'm just one of, of a number. I have to thank OASW for the enormous opportunities to develop leadership skills. And, and Mary Kay Lucier Manet mentioned that, but so did Kate. Kate talked about the abundance of leaders that we have. And uh, I was always warmly welcomed in OA, what was OAPSW at the time. Actually, I was on the board with Sharon when we did uh, make the decision to buy for 10 Jarvis. And there were lots of us that had sleepless nights about that. But when I was in Thunder Bay, it was my first meeting, and I was so warmly welcomed. I, I just w was surprised, so pleasantly surprised. And every place else I went after that, and Kate talked about the places I've worked. And so either I've had an adventurous life or I can't keep a job. You know, it's, all, <laughs> you know, it's all in your perspective. It's all in your perspective. But, but uh, particularly to young uh, graduates and young colleagues, I've always said that your professional association is such an incredible place to network, to meet all kinds of colleagues, to learn a great deal, and to have exposure to leadership opportunities. Because without OASW, I wouldn't have had the opportunities that I did enjoy at both the national and international level. And harking back to what Kate has said, but also others, Karen particularly, about the OASW staff. There, there just is not another, and I've worked at small agencies and large organizations, and there's not another place where you have that constellation of knowledge, wisdom, commitment, and capacity to make others look fabulous. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I, I can't close without acknowledging Beverly Antel. And uh, when I came in tonight, I had the chance to meet Judy, her sister, and Mike, Judy's husband, and the two daughters, Valerie and Megan. Megan, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I, I mean, I knew instantly when I laid eyes on Judy that she was Beverly's sister. Beverly was such an inspiration. Um, she was a woman who, who you just wanted to be with so that you could absorb by osmosis or whatever the, the palpable goodness and the wisdom. Uh, she was incredibly warm and um, supportive. Um, I, I couldn't believe how relentlessly optimistic she was. She was always searching for, for solutions, and by golly, she was part of the constructive and successful <coughs> solutions that uh, developed from any kind of encounter. Uh, a friend of mine, Marion Walsh, who, who actually is a C social worker as well, Marion is the CEO at Bridgepoint Hospital. Marion was the uh, CEO at Home Care in St. John's, Newfoundland, and worked with Beverly in Newfoundland. And even though she didn't know, didn't have any contact with Beverly when they both moved to Ontario, she talked about Beverly in exactly the same way that those of us who were gifted to know her 
uh, talk about her. So it was such a, a pleasure and an honor, Judy, to, to meet you today, and I, I really can't say enough about how touched I was that, that you and your family made um, the trip here. Thank you so very much. And, and finally, warm thanks to my colleagues at OASW for this incredible honor. Um, I, I now have to live up to Beverly's legacy, which is uh, a high threshold indeed. Uh, and especially warm thanks to Ellen Sue Mesber because I know she engineered this nomination. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I have the pleasure today of having my sister from Saskatchewan here. My sister Joan, my dearest and nearest sister Joan, and her husband Bob. It was great to have them here. So this officially closes the uh, the AGM, and uh, we're going to move on to uh, uh, to introduce our keynote speaker and to take on that pleasurable task. I'm going to yield the podium to Joan Mackenzie Davis.